Yep. Coming to you live from Rue Manor, it's Rob has a podcast, and now here's the guy who's got one killer show for you guys tonight, Rob Sesternino. Hello, everybody, and what is going on, and welcome to our very special Who Done It uh, reunion uh, with the finalists from the show, and uh, let me introduce you to everybody that you've been watching all summer on one of our favorite shows, Who Done It. I, I guess uh, let's... Let's not uh, let's not uh, bury the lead. Let's start with the the winner of Who Done It. Uh, here he is joining us is uh, Cam Perez. Uh, Cam, how are you? <laughs> yes. Great. How are you doing? Good. Fantastic. All right. And now also uh, the uh, the woman who uh, could not at any point kill him this season. Here is the killer, Chris. Hello. Chris, uh, are those are you uh, talking to us tonight from a state penitentiary? Yeah, do you see the bars in the background? <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, you you hear that laugh? You know who it is? The woman who almost won. Uh, who done it? Here it is. Here she is, Lindsay. Hello, <laughs> Lindsay. How are you doing? I'm just fine. <laughs> and uh, and now here is uh, Melina. How is how is your connection? Uh, are are you able to uh, to hear us and see us? I can hear you and see you. Can you hear and see me? Yes. Here is <laughs> Melina. Uh, <laughs> Melina, you know you're not in a uh, a fast moving limousine drinking champagne, are you? <laughs> I'm not, but there are leather seats, so it's kind of close. <laughs> okay. And uh, somebody who's been in and out uh, with their connection, he was with us only moments ago, but uh, now his connection is frozen. Uh, Ronnie, uh, who may or may not uh, pop back in uh, later on. So uh, if you see a, a blank window on the bottom of the screen, uh, Ronnie may pop in. And here is my, my partner in crime, uh, Kurt Clark. Kurt, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. Okay, so we are live here. We are uh, it's completely interactive. We are on robhasawebsite.com. Uh, we are also on my YouTube channel, which you can get to at robhasawebsite.com slash YouTube. We want to take your questions. Use the hashtag RHAP uh, to tweet to us or post them on YouTube because I know uh, so many people have uh, really enjoyed the show that you guys were a part of this summer. And I know, um, you know, it's, it, it's everybody who has so many questions to ask you guys. Um, I, I don't even know. I don't even know uh, where to start. I guess let's let's talk about the re revelation that Chris is the killer. And I know Lindsay was trying to ask her right up before we started the show tonight. Uh, how hard was it to hide the secret? Did your family know that you were the killer, uh, Chris? What was it like uh, knowing this information all summer? Um, honestly, I went into it pretty cut and dry. Like this is a job. I have a job to do. It's my job to keep a secret and. I'm sure everybody kind of saw throughout the show that I'm very serious about tasks when given to me. Um, it was hard to keep it from my family, and they guessed. They, I guess, just know me the best of anyone and figured, yeah, you know, you either won or you are the killer. Um, a few people thought I came in second, which actually bothered me. Um, <laughs> I was like, so, so you don't think I went all the way? Just real close. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it wasn't very hard for me to keep the secret. Um, now, for you, uh, for Cam and for Lindsay, who were very close uh, with Chris uh, mo most of this game, I guess, uh, Cam, uh, you won the game, but you had no idea that the killer was your uh, BFF in the game here. I had absolutely no idea. I still think Gino should have been the killer. I, yeah. I was completely, completely dumbfounded when there was the the final reveal. I I still couldn't process it. I'm like, there's no way. No, you're <laughs> kidding me with this. No, it's no, it's not a joke. Uh, Lindsay, now all along you you expected <laughs> that Chris was the killer, but you mm -hmm. could not, you could not put the whole case together, unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately for Cam. <laughs> I mean, the last episode was just running around, so I don't know if this case was putting the case together. 
<laughs> yeah. Now I suspected the, at least the whole set, last half of the season that the killer was none other than Melina, uh, and I was very confused in the last episode, Melina. I thought it was you up until the the up until the last minute of the show. I thought you were going to pop out as the killer. Yeah, and that's funny because it was you and thousands and thousands of other people. <laughs> and for whatever reason, it was just, even when I died, and this is hilarious, even when I died, they're like, oh no, she didn't She didn't die. She's still the killer. And even when Chris is in the room with Cam, I was getting just hundreds and hundreds of tweets of people saying, oh no, that's Melina in the whole iron suit. That, that wasn't Chris. I'm like, no guys, like I wish, but no, no, <laughs> I died. <laughs> Oh, Melina, I, I thought you were the killer because you were the only one that seemed so scared the whole time. You were screaming and shrieking every time something happened. I thought, oh, she's faking it. Well, she's that scared. Nobody's really dying. I know, and it's so funny because just naturally, I, I that's just who I am. Like, I, I spook so easy, and if you're ever on one of my flights, you'll see that because the flight attendants <laughs> love to mess with me, and they love to jump out, and I'm the one screaming in an aisle at, like, 2 in the morning. It's ridiculous. But that's just who I am. And honestly, like, I knew everything was fake. Our dreams and our hopes for 250000 wasn't fake. But I knew, you know, the whole process was fake. And I just tried to let myself be fully merged in the whole, you know, situation. And I, I think I pulled it off. Yeah. Well, I hope I'm never on a flight with you and we hit some turbulence and you start <laughs> screaming. I'm going to be freaking out. <laughs> yeah, I hope not. Yeah. Uh, well, let's go back to Chris. And Chris, uh, so many people, myself included, have questions about. So, as you knew you were the killer the whole time, so how? What was your approach in in the game? Were you trying to mess with people? Were you trying to give misinformation? Were you just acting as though you were just one of the players? Or what was it like for you to go through this game knowing you were the killer? I, I think the second that Chris Abrego approached me and asked me to be the killer. I knew that the only way, or for me, I felt the only way that it would work and be believable is if I 100% convinced myself that I wasn't the killer and if I tried to win the money. So I really was playing legitimately as I would play were I not the killer. Um, I, I tried like hell to win. Um, and I think that's probably the only reason why, although a lot of people did end up suspecting me, um, you know, you pick a horse and you bet on it until it dies in this game. Um, but yeah, I, I, I genuinely played. I didn't get any extra information. Um, legally, it would have been unfair for the producers to feed me any information because then technically I could have picked the winner um, or made it, made it lead that way in someone's direction. So I, I really played just like everybody else and I applied to be on the show because I genuinely wanted to test my skills and prove to myself that former beauty queen could outwit some really smart people. Now, did you try to give any misinformation or try to throw anybody off the scent as the killer? Like, were you uh, any way? I, I know some people, so many people have compared this show to The Mole because um, it has some similarities. Did you do anything to try to throw people off? I threw a ton of shade on Lindsay. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Every uh, single that's week. That's about it, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, uh, Chris had a great theory that I was believing fully, and it never aired. I thought it was, like, perfect. You want to share that? Oh, my, my theory and the way I spun it to everybody to try and convince them that Lindsay was the killer is that she clearly has multiple personalities, and that <laughs> cute, bubbly, you know, squeaky laugh Lindsay was the nice, normal Lindsay, and she genuinely wanted to help us succeed because she also was in fear of the killer. But, you know, everyone, when nighttime hit, she would Jekyll Hyde and turn into Lindsay the killer. Is that true, Lindsay? Is that... <laughs> I, I don't know. I think you have the killer right in front of you. <laughs> not sure which one it is. I think the... Part of me still thinks Lindsay's the killer. Well, I want to take a lot of questions from the Rob is a Podcast uh, audience on, on this show tonight. And some of them are coming into us already from Twitter. Uh, Colin Stone on Twitter wants to know, on day one, how much did you guys know about the game format and how did you adjust as you learned more about it? So... Um, 
I want to uh, direct this question to you, Cam, because in some ways I felt like you were uh, the Richard Hatch of Who Done It, in that you were the, the the show's first winner, and also you were the guy who in, in invented the Who Done It Alliance, which I don't know if the show's creators thought that would happen when you, this game started, but you very early on said, "Hey, I'm going to make this group, and we're going to have an alliance, and we're going to share information." And it really polarized the whole game uh, with all the other people who weren't in the alliance against you. Yeah, uh, we we learned the rules of the game the night before. Um, we had a meeting with uh, Chris Abrego and Anthony Zyker, the uh, executive producers, and that's when they fi first finally sat us down and told us what the rules were. They told us that we were going to be the victims. We didn't know any of that until that night, um, which, incidentally, I actually did not know I was on the show while I was <laughs> learning all this information. Um, I was actually the hey. alternate. And uh, I'm sorry? Oh, what did you? Oh, go, go ahead. Yeah, so I was actually the alternate. Um, I we came to the, you know we did the final round of casting in LA. Uh, they told me you're not on the show, you're the alternate. Send me back home. They called me back two days later after I told my boss and everything that we didn't need to schedule any five weeks of vacation anymore. Um, and I'm just kidding, come back. But we so are not sure that you're on the show. And they just kept giving me these deadlines, and then oh well, you'll know by this time, you'll know by that time, and they just fail, 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 fail. We were at the house, we were mic'd, and eventually uh, Chris Abrego pulls aside one of the contestants, the guy who you never met, uh, tells him I don't know what, and you just see him walk off. He comes back to our group and he's like, all right, well, you guys are the cast. You're the final 13. And I'm like, oh, well, that's good. That's news to me. Nobody, nobody else there knew what was going on. I, I don't know what they thought about that 14th person, but I was the only one who was like, sitting there freaking out, trying to figure out what I was going to do with the next five weeks of my life. <laughs> How big of a did shock? anyone suspect... Oh, go ahead. I was like, did anyone suspect that that 14th person was the killer at any point during the show? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, mean, I, I was watching him like a hawk. At, I mean, I already knew I was the killer at that point, but I was like, oh, something's going on here. Maybe there's two of us. <laughs> so, turns out, dude just... Enjoy enjoyed a joint. <laughs> oh. uh, so, um, here's a, here's a question from uh, Nick Two S who wants to know, uh, Chris, what do you have against cheerleaders? Uh, now, how big of a shock was it for you uh, to see one of your uh, fellow cast members uh, be killed off so quickly in the first episode, Sherry? I mean, for me, I, I have nothing against cheerleaders. I have a lot of friends that are cheerleaders. Ironically, um, that first day when we were all in the house, Sherry is who I talked to the most. Um, and I, I was like, oh, good, I, I'm going to foster a friendship with this girl really quickly. Like, yeah, I, I have a friend in this. You know, I, I can possi – a possible patsy. And then she died right away, and I was like, well, great, there goes that. Um, <laughs> but, you there know, goes... a lot of people don't realize that the entire series was written – way, way before the cast was chosen, and it was more like a plug-and-chug situation. It was like, we here are 13 people, Chris, you're the killer. It's all very, they, they wrote it to be sexless. Um, so, you know, unfortunately, cheerleader went first. Oh, very, very sad story for Sherry. Uh, now, how did you guys all get involved with this show? Because we didn't hear anything about it in, uh, I mean, we're very focused in the Survivor and Big Brother world, so we didn't hear about this show coming up until, uh, you know, just a few months before it was on. So how did you guys all end up on Who Done It? Uh, well, for me at least, um, I was actually, the casting director contacted uh, the Mens Mensa in New York and in Philly, and they wanted to have uh, Mensa members apply to the show. Um, and I got an email blast from the New York chapter um, and responded to that. And that's how I made my way through. Okay, right. interesting. I can. I kind of. I actually came in also through the. I'm not in Mensa, but the a friend of mine who was on the Glass House last year. Your friends um, with Stephanie from yeah, the Glass, yeah. Glass House. Yeah, we used to work together. So, um, yeah, I just randomly saw something on her Facebook wall about 
this and asking for smart people, and I just joked around, not even knowing that Anthony Zyker from CSI was involved, just like, because I just absolutely love CSI. I actually haven't watched a single episode since we filmed this. Maybe I'm a little put <laughs> off for a while, but um, yeah, just from there, it kind of progressed. Yeah. Um, and Chris? Uh, I got a casting notification and went in for the casting. Uh, Melina, how about you? How did you end up uh, as as a flight attendant uh, to get from uh, being a because everybody else uh, has, has or a lot of people have like jobs that are somehow connected with crime solving. Right, mine is completely off the wall. Which actually, I mean, I solve some crimes on that airplane. There's people who steal all the time. I mean, I have my fair share of crime solving. But no, mine was completely random. Um, I had a friend who was in the Avengers, and he was just an extra, and he got paid a buttload of money to do nothing, and he's also a flight attendant, so I was like, you know what, I can do that, so I searched in Facebook, like in the search, and I put in casting agencies, and then the first one I found, I clicked on, and it just happened to have like a post about this show, and then I I sent them an email, and then that the rest is history. Well, wow, that's a fantastic story. I know. It's, <laughs> Wait, hold on. It's really while, random. While he's here, Ronnie, are, are you Yay. there? Yeah, I finally got the computer. Yay! Yes, <laughs> I had to go to the car and grab the backup computer and then log it in, and then it's like, ah, oh, and I'm here. That, that damned monkey. Ronnie! <laughs> I'm yeah. never going to that. <laughs> so, Ronnie, how, how did you end up on Who Done It? Um, well, I've been doing uh, Spanish television for a few years now, and, and I have a casting agency that kind of uses keywords like investigator, detective, bounty hunter, and stuff like that. And this casting call hit on one of those searches, and um, I think I went down to Philadelphia and met with uh, with one of the casting agents, and then a few weeks later I was in California, and um, I guess uh, here I am. They okay. loved you. Yeah, Ronnie, a recruit for Who Done It, that and and not a frozen food salesperson, a, a no. bounty hunter. Now, are you, are you really a bounty hunter? That's what I do for a living. I just walked into the door for a horrible, horrible day. Oh no. Yeah, I, I I mean I just got to this place and about 15 minutes before the sheriff's office had just taken the guy away, and it's just like just watching money roll down the street. <laughs> oh no. Lindsay knows what that's like, right? Oh. <laughs> oh. Too, soon. Oh, yeah. too soon. Too soon. That's too soon. Okay. Sorry about that. Months. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Um, so I think a lot of people have uh, questions about the uh, reenactments. Uh, uh, Brian Scally wants to know. Uh, did Chris play the killer in all of the reenactments in the episode, or did somebody else and you just film them uh, for the finale? Uh, I didn't. I had nothing to do with the killings ever because it would have given away that I was the killer. So it was a, actually a stunt man who filmed all of those. I just did the pickup scenes for the finale. Yeah. Um, now, so many people, uh, their favorite part of the show, uh, bes besides from uh, how great you guys were, was uh, Giles and what a character he became on, on the show. What was Giles like in real life? Giles. Yeah, he never, <laughs> he never grew character. I don't never. know whether, never, I don't know whether he that. is really that way, but he never changed. He was always that guy. Yeah. Now he now he was an actor. Uh, what what is his name? Gild Gildart. Gildart? Gildart. Yeah. And and <laughs> really uh Gildart. like yeah. So and Gildart never broke a uh, character like Daniel Day Lewis. Exactly. Full yeah. yeah. method much actor. actor. Yeah. Everywhere one truck outside. <laughs> we we all threw curveballs at him to see if we could get a rise out of him. Um, it was really kind of fun to try and stump stump Gildart, stump Giles, and. He always played right along and answered as Giles would answer. Well, give us some funny stories. What were some things you did uh, to throw Giles off? Um, I think all of us would just kind of like poke little things, especially when he would start to get weird with like the lays and the luau mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Anytime we could, yeah. we could get a little innuendo in there, we would and see if we could <laughs> take the bait. <laughs> now, there we, was uh, some... Oh, go ahead. Uh, we, uh, after the episode at the ranch... You know, we yeah, didn't see him that way. So one time we saw him out of uniform. Yeah. Uh, he was, like, wearing jeans and Crocs 
Oh. Riding in his Prius. Um, <laughs> very, you know, very un Giles like car. But still, when he talked to us, it was still the Giles banter. Uh, he told us I think he told us he was from Brooklyn, actually. Oh, he tried to trick me that he wasn't English. I was not happy. <laughs> the girl who grew up in England herself. How did Giles trick you? Up in the piles. Ooh, he. I mean, he told me I was trying to ask him where he was from in England, trying to bond with him. You know, he is our butler, and then he tells me he's from Brooklyn, <laughs> and he put on a pretty convincing American accent. How did you guys keep a straight face? Uh, and there was a couple episodes where Giles was acting uh, really odd when uh, you guys went to the stables. Uh, he seemed like he was all out of sorts. And then the episode where you guys came back to the, the mansion, uh, it seemed as almost as if Giles had been day drinking uh, during yes. that episode. Uh, did you guys... When, when he's acting odd, uh, I mean, how do you guys deal with that? You know, we just... Well, Lindsay reacted exactly as she is right now, um, and we were much tamer versions of that. But it was—I mean—it was hard to keep a straight face sometimes with some of his uh, some of his puns. Um, there were a couple of scenes that I was really looking forward to seeing and seeing people's reactions to, like the uh, the British Rambo they did. He had like this whole thing where he wore this like safari outfit after he shot the uh, mountain lion. Yeah. He came in with this outfit. And he was doing this whole Rambo thing, and it was like one of the craziest things he's ever done. And nobody got to see it. I was really disappointed by it. So, yeah. Well, let's talk about the luau because yeah. that was probably the the one of the wilder moments on the show. Uh, so G Giles starts talking about how he's uh, that he said he's gonna get laid tonight, uh, <laughs> and, and then. So we have the whole thing uh, with the with the limbo. Now I read this on on the internet today um, that Chris, you you're the one who told who, who took Giles's jacket. Uh, now was that was that a hint that you were the killer because uh, we needed to get Giles's jacket off him so he could do the limbo so Gino could steal his his phone. They so they told me like, hey Chris, you you tell Giles to do the limbo because. All of us, I mean, we're all going to fess up to it eventually. Some of us turn into kind of negative Nancy. <laughs> I wouldn't stand on the dance floor because uh, I knew that chandelier was coming down. Exactly. So all of us, like, you know, we were like, oh, yeah, this this luau is a sham. So I, I refused to participate in the uh, in the limbo. And so they were like, we'll tell Giles to do it. And I was like, all right. <laughs> Um, and then they ended up using that part because it did end up piecing together to where it was like I was the instigator of Giles limboing, and then he had to take off his jacket, and that gave Gino opportunity to take his jacket and the cell phone. So th little did I know, I had no idea they were setting me up. <laughs> I just thought I, that was my way to get out of limboing. <laughs> um, you know, go the, for it. Um, right after that, when you know the power goes out and everything, we're taken over to the study um, and Giles gives us a little speech and that was that was the exact opposite end of the Giles spectrum that was Giles at his darkest and it looks like mm -hmm. you know like he was like fuming he looked like he was gonna kill the killer if he found him next um, it was it reminds me of that scene in Willy Wonka where like he gets really like almost satanic for a second yeah um, it was He's crazy and again Left on the cutting room floor. Um, yeah. It's a shame, really. You guys didn't get to see that. It was some like it was like really unnerving. To see yeah, I was waiting. I was angry. waiting to die the whole time. Like you guys were all moving around. I'm like, I'm like, okay. People would come to move me and touch my arm. I go, that's it. I'm dead. They're like, no, relax. I go, and then somebody else would come and grab me. I go, that's it. I'm dead because that that was the point where it was between me and Dino and nobody. They don't tell you. They didn't tell me right then and there to the very last <laughs> second. That was like 15, 20 yeah. minutes of pure torture. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a question from Brian Scally, and this is a question that, that we all had uh, on the show. Uh, this is for Lindsay. Why was Lindsay so giggly on the morning that Melina died? Uh, when, so you guys are wait, waiting here in, in the living room, and, they, and now out comes Lindsay, and she's like, oh my god, Lindsay has been like poisoned with helium. Uh, 
She's definitely gonna die. She's acting so weird. And yeah. Yeah, what was going on there? This was yeah. funny. Cam and I were talking about this today. Um, I it was a funny situation because they don't they when you were scared. It was the first time I was scared, so I didn't know what to do. And they put you into strange situations. So everyone, I guess, was already in the room. I didn't know that. They just said, go, you know, go to the bar and stand there. So I go to the bar and stand there, and I'm just standing there. And then, like, I kind of come over when they say, and then they're all asking me, what are you doing? And I'm like, ah, I don't know. Like, it was just a really funny situation. And as you can see, it's hard for me not to laugh at funny situations. So. <laughs> I don't know how suspicious. <laughs> I, can... yeah. I don't know how many of you have listened to the podcast, but Rob and I kind of had a dueling. I was team Lindsay in terms of the killer. <laughs> And Rob was team Melina. And I think we were both just watching that ex moment through the same lens of, okay, which of them is about to die right now? I think we both <laughs> thought we both thought that you were poisoned or something. <laughs> like, waiting for you to keel over at the bar. That would have been awesome. Um, <laughs> that would have happened. Dude. I think that would have absolutely been the worst murder. <laughs> no. Well, did they ever give you any sense of why did they make you all go in the car that day? Uh, you guys go go in the limo, and then you open in champagne glasses, and then the car does like a does like a U turn. Um, wh why? Just to get you out of the house so Giles could get tied up. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I did the did the car. Yeah, we were we were trying to figure out the riddle. Oh yeah. There nope. was because the the like the, the message that Giles gave us on the way out. I forget what it was. It was something about an incline about okay. the sky oh, or something. We thought oh, that they were going yeah. to make us go skydiving. Is what we thought. <laughs> um, he drive us off a cliff. Yeah, I was ready for a cliff. cliff. Was the other one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, here's and another... then when the car turns around. Yeah. Sorry. When, so when the car turns around, I'm immediately like, okay, who was given something that they forgot to bring? Like you know, somebody did the whole kukui nut shell thing again. Now the killer's pissed, and we're going back to the house for that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so here's a question from Punks193. He wants to know, out of all the deaths that you guys saw, which one was the best one to witness? Uh, was there was there one death that stands out for you guys that was uh, the either the best or funniest to uh, see go down? Dante's. Yeah. Dante's. Dante's. Not sure. funniest, but scariest. Dante. Yeah, definitely not funny. No, it, was it, was a, it was a. I mean, it was a ball of fire. Someone on fire running at us. I don't think, and it was right after we got there in the middle of like it was like four a.m. or something, and none of us were prepared for that. <laughs> when you compare it to what we had seen so far, which was Sherry's death, which was just a loud noise and a chick flopping on the ground, like mm, not that scary. With a bunch of plastic fish. Um, yeah. Yeah, with a bunch of plastic fish, we were just like, oh. Really? <laughs> Um, so then to see an actual human being running on fire, and w none of us had any idea. I, I was crying in that episode because I, you know, I'm a cold-hearted killer. Um, so that it just really freaked I think everybody out because we were like, we're standing that close to somebody on fire, and it took a minute for me to realize it wasn't Dante, that it was a stunt woman. So I was just like, if I have to participate in any fire running, uh -uh. wait, it was a woman? Yeah, it was a woman. Oh, Dante stunt him. And she really looked like him. I mean, when he ran past mm -hmm. you, we were like, wait a minute, did they really set Dante on fire? That was what really, yeah, that's what really scared me. I mean, we all knew it was a stunt. You know, there were firefighters around and stuff. But I thought that was actually Dante. Mm -hmm. I did. Yeah, it looked just like him. But if they set me on fire, <laughs> I'm going to actually die. <laughs> and at that point, are you guys wondering, what did I get myself into? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Nice. <laughs> Uh, let's take a question from Bennett Payne, who wants to know, uh, Chris, did you have anything to do with the uh, with the killings or making the? Uh, actually, I I clicked the wrong question. You've uh, you you've answered that one. Um, so uh, let me. Uh, how about this from Cindy Wigglesworth? Uh, do you eat the food at the tables uh, when you get the? Scare <laughs> how much of that? How much of that spread that they put out? Do you guys actually eat? None of it. <laughs> None of it. <laughs> yeah. At yep. one point, I they mean, came out and they were like, "Don't eat anything, or you'll die." Oh, the f yeah, the for Dante's episode, all of the stuff that was like supposed to be set on fire, they're like, "Do not eat any of it." 
And then they came back, all right, just kidding, maybe this is safe, but maybe. <laughs> we're like, all right, well, we're just going to pass and wait for the pizza later on. The beer and pizza, of course. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, all right, here's the question I was trying to click on. From Ben and Payne, uh, wants to know, uh, Chris, do you have any trained monkeys? Uh, now, it was it was such a, a big part of the show, something that we love so much. Uh, Ronnie's theory about the trained monkey uh, was involved in the uh, death of Gino. Ronnie, did you have a, did you have any uh, other clues that pointed you in the direction of a trained monkey being involved uh, with Gino's death, or was that just a gut feeling? I was toast. Do you understand? When I walked into that room, I was toast. I mean, I didn't have anything that Lindsay had found. I, I was just completely lost, and I was just like, you know what? The first thing that comes out of my mouth, I'm just going to say it. And I turned, and I looked at the monkeys with the, on the mantle, and I said, you know what? Screw it. I guess a monkey just went up there. Because Cam was there. There was an unnecessary rope next to the chandelier. I mean, what was that rope doing there? I mean, they didn't lower it down slowly, right? And then you had also found the clue that they put the gun in the drawer. And I'm like, what did the killer do with the, the gun? So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to die anyway. So let's go with the monkey thing. So if there, is a, if there is a season two and the killer uses a trained monkey in one of the deaths, are you going to take credit for that? I am, and I'm going to ask for my compensation for it, yes. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Um, it's, let's, it's monkey mania right now, though. <laughs> we love it. We love the train monkey. I wish the train monkey was involved. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Ryan Weiss wants to know on Twitter, uh, did the dead bodies in the morgue ever laugh or talk to you guys? Seems hard to stay still for that long. Now, uh, every, uh, uh, or I should say, uh, only Ronnie was the only one who made it to the morgue, so maybe we should uh, focus this question to him. Uh, but did you guys have any bloopers that happened in the morgue while the, your uh, cast members were on that table? Well, yeah, Ronnie no. and I were in the morgue with uh, Dana and Sasha. Oh. And uh, <laughs> once I we just finished... scared the crap out of us is what yes. she did. <laughs> yeah. She, once we finished our investigation and we're like on our way out, like as soon as, we, as, soon as I got looked at Ronnie, I'm like, okay, we're good, we're good. And then we start to walk. She gets up and goes, boom! And no, scared yeah, the bejesus yeah. out of both of us. Like I just screamed really? like a little girl. That's funny. We had we had a really good one. Um, Lindsay was there. Remember Lindsay? <laughs> and Dana was there. okay. She remembers. And, uh, it was with Ulysses, and he was naked, right? So we're we're standing there, and the only thought in my mind was like, let's make Ulysses laugh. And we start, like, stroking his chest. The fans are going to love this. And we're like, oh, you're so sexy. Oh, you're such a strong man, Ulysses. And he just, he couldn't hold it. And he just busted out. Oh, wait, what did Dana say? She's like, oh, honey, you can get it. <laughs> and he just, he couldn't handle it. He just started laughing. But obviously that didn't, that didn't make it on the um, editing room. <laughs> I saw a uh, GIF on the internet of, uh, I, I think it was, uh, uh, I guess it was it was it Chris and Melina in the morgue uh, lifting up the sheet off of Gino. Did you guys oh. see that? <laughs> I mean, I told Gino to his face. That is a, a very attractive, tall glass of man. So I mean, when in Rome. <laughs> what what was there a who done it man? <laughs> Could have. <laughs> Whoa! All right, we're getting we need the final six for Gino. Um, <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, let's let's talk about this because there was uh, a lot of a lot of this on uh, twi a lot of people on Twitter wanted to know this. Uh, Cam, after you won, it did not seem like all of the cast members were happy for you uh, to have the victory. Uh, specifically, uh, <laughs> Dana and Sasha did not seem uh, particularly thrilled that you were the winner. And there's been some allegations on Twitter that uh, that. They that either they gave you the finger or you gave them the finger. Uh, Cam, do, do you have any comments on uh, Fingergate? I absolutely have a comment on. Uh. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So this, I mean, that I knew about this whole thing when we were at the house, and the way I remembered it, at least, I think that what they had said was that I had flipped Melina off. And they were just mad for what I did to Melina. But I, first of all, 
if I was going to flip somebody off, it was not going to be Medina. There are definitely <laughs> people higher on that list to get the, to get the finger. First of all, hey, who's so, getting who's getting the finger in the in the finger power rankings? Cam, who's number one? Okay, number one. I mean, this is, this is what we're here for, right? <laughs> number one is Sasha with a bullet. Okay. Then Gino. <laughs> <laughs> then that's then that's pretty much it. Actually, I didn't have any problems. Like I never had any problems with Dana while we were on the show. Um, yeah, I, she is the one who was like the leader of this finger gate movement on Twitter. But I don't um I don't know where she got that from. I don't know why I would have flipped off Melina. Plus, if, here's the thing: if I was gonna use, I mean, that walk was like my my, my victory lap. If I was gonna use that to like be nasty, I would have just stopped, put down my suitcase, and like. Screw you, screw you, screw you. <laughs> and then, like that was that was all for me to control. Like I would not have to do it like surreptitiously. And I think if anybody's been watching the show, you know that I don't do things like secretly. I will confront you to your face if I have a problem. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, so why why are they saying that you gave them the finger? Well they they were saying that I gave Melina the finger. And I don't Melina, you can chime in on this because I don't know where they got that idea from. I think just we were all I don't know. <laughs> Lindsay <made fun. laughs> We were here's here's the first thing. Like whether like let's say Cam did give me the finger. Let's just let's just say that like putting it on Twitter is completely wrong and I disagree. However, we were all very upset. I don't think anybody wanted to see anybody other than themselves win. So like to have you know Cam standing there, people were already upset about that. And then he you know he was waving, he was touching his nose, and I could see like why Lindsay stop. Oh really? I could see why like someone was like, oh my god, you know he gave you the finger. But you know this is, it's Twitter and like I love Cam, and if he gave me the finger, I would never speak to him again so and I speak to him probably more than I should so I don't know I think I think it just needs to get you know let go but even if like I just want to make sure people understand like even if he had done it to put it out on Twitter I disagree with like 100% and I wish like we could just stop talking about it because I think it's just I think it's silly it's silly to perpetuate the drama after the fact yeah that was uh that was probably that I, day was a 16 hour day also for all Especially of us on Twitter yeah. Uh, well, that. that uh, speaking of, of that day in, in that particular, uh, Ethan Hensel wants to know, uh, Melina and Ronnie, how fun was it to act like a zombie in the final episode? Did you have any idea that you guys would be playing zombies uh, when you signed up for this? I didn't play a zombie. Oh, well, I, <laughs> I got left out of all the fun. <laughs> oh, poor Melina. No, I was the, I was the Ronnie, caboose. That, I didn't. I was the caboose on the zombie train. And... Uh, <laughs> And uh, no, they just they they actually put us in makeup, and uh, they explained to us as the day went along what we were going to be doing. Uh, but as I said before, that particular day, I'm I'm pretty sure for the ones of us that were zombies, it was a 16-hour day. So by the time uh, we saw Cam at the end, 16-hour uh, drunk day. Uh, <laughs> Ooh. It was a bathing, I was, I was a bathing suit for 16 hours. And yeah. they, they were walking around with a blanket on me all day, just putting it over me because you were it gets really cold. Be frozen. Yeah, yeah um, it, it was really cold. But um, uh, no, they didn't tell us anything about. It was just a lot. A lot of the stuff was great because it was on the fly. It was like this is what we're doing today and go. And um, I think that happened mostly from from day one. It was like they they took a bunch of little mice and threw them in a little cage and said, here, run around. <laughs> That's exactly uh, what they did to us. How, how come you had to come back as a zombie in your bathing suit and Ulysses came back dressed like Indiana Jones? I did, the Indiana Jones thing was just... We, awesome. We're all sitting there in the room and here comes Ulysses and he Indiana Jones. And, we're like, too funny. and then I asked him, I go, did you bring these clothes? Because you know that would be what he would do, right? He would bring his own ensemble and say, no, I'm wearing this. And uh, <laughs> they had it laid around. I don't know. <laughs> wow. Um, I, I want to know, Chris. Have Have you had any backlash uh, from anybody as being announced as the killer? We know that people. A lot of people felt like this show was real, and they were really killing people on TV. Has anybody uh, c come up to you and been like, uh, "How could you kill all these people? They were supposed to be your friends." Uh, has anybody thought that the show was real and you really were a killer? 
No. <laughs> I mean, maybe, but not to my face. Um, so far, all the all the feedback I've gotten has been really positive. Everybody's just like, oh, you know, I was rooting for you. You broke my heart, but you know, actually, I, in, I, I guess I still like you anyway. <laughs> uh, you know what? Uh, on my, uh, I, I was out of town for, for the finale. I was flying back yesterday, and there was a little boy at the Atlanta airport chasing me down, yelling, you're the killer, you're the killer, oh, you're the killer. What? Um, if you're watching, I'm sorry that I spoiled the ending for you. I didn't realize you hadn't watched it yet. Aww. <laughs> like, no, I'm not the killer. You didn't see it was Chris. Yeah. Oh, um, no. Does that create problems for you, Cam? I mean, uh, th thank goodness you have some connections at Homeland Security, but you're going through an airport. Somebody's yelling at you, you're the killer. Uh, does that create, create some issues? Yeah. Uh, luckily, I was not selected for any additional screening this time around. Um... I'll let you know next time I fly whether there's any problems or not. So far, so good. Yeah. I just hope that Melina's on your flight. And yes. don't your finger. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Be sure right. not to scratch my nose anywhere near her. I yeah. know it. <laughs> it was a pick. Uh, so, uh, let's see. So uh, we have so many questions uh, com coming in. Uh, Kurt, you have a you have another question for these guys? Yeah, I was I was kind of wondering. Um, uh, Ronnie, I think particularly for you, we saw that camp knowledge of poison came in, in handy during the ricin uh, part of your death. Did you get to bring in any experience from a, being a bounty hunter into this, either in terms of you know analyzing clues or potentially even just in how, how you interact with people? Um, you know, uh, a lot of the stuff that I do is field work, and it, it, there were many times where I would be explaining to other people in the group like technical terms and I'm like why aren't they questioning me on how I know all this stuff <laughs> and uh, yeah it was just I would just I would just mention it um, I, I think the only thing that really gave me a little bit of, it, of an advantage is being a little bit more aware of surroundings and, and on a day-to-day -day basis I'm a little bit more aware and that allowed me to maybe look at things a little bit differently and I guess I mean yeah it probably did give me a little bit of an advantage obviously not a great advantage but, um, you know, it did help out a lot. All right, so um, let's, let's go to uh, Chris, Ber uh, Chris Berger's question. Uh, and wants to know, um, did Lindsay ever consider going with Melina at Final Four to avoid a cam Uh Did you ever, when you got to Final Four, did you ever think of breaking off with uh, Cam and Chris to go with Melina? It was early on. I mean, these... These like four people that you have here are by far my favorite on the show. So I mean, every every day, like Chris, Chris and Cam were my partners, but always, and they would get mad at me. You could see if we were like sitting anywhere, Chris and Cam would be next to each other, Melina and Ronnie would be next to each other, and I would literally be sitting in the middle, just if we were like sitting around waiting for the next shoot. And that's just how the entire season went. And so. I mapped out, I just looked back at this like book of notes that I took, and I don't know, I know Cam, I saw Ronnie taking notes the entire time, like we should have known we weren't the killers just because we were taking notes, but I like filled up pages and I mapped out like every scenario, and it never worked in my favor to leave Cam and Chris because they were so tight and I was so convinced that Chris was the killer. So if like I couldn't ever separate them, I just had to stick with them and there was no other choice. <laughs> And you had Chris picked out from week one, right? I think. Yeah. And I think, and, and Chris, you kind of alluded to, you know, pick that horse and then ride that horse until it dies. Was there anything in particular that made you suspicious? Was it a hunch? Or did you actually see anything <laughs> along the way that... It was our theory. <laughs> no. So I... So Chris, on the first day, it's funny, the pageant thing, I, I was looking back, too, and she would just say things sometimes that were, like, really funny things to say, like, oh, the killer killed, like, a cheerleader, what's he going to do with a pageant girl? And I, like, wrote, like, I was like, why would someone say that? That's kind of weird. And then I, like, thought there was all this physical evidence left behind. Like, we found, like, Cameline and I found this, like, these little red pieces that looked like Chris's suitcase. And so, like, all along, things would be confirmed, and it wouldn't be about the evidence, like, fake evidence, obviously, that was nothing in the end, um, <laughs> but just, like, her reactions to it. Um, 
just always kind of confirmed it until all the, I actually think all the evidence towards the very, very end pointed to Cam because there were a lot of things we discussed that only a left-handed person could pull off or, like, naturally pull off or, like, to try and strangle Gino. Like, Chris is not nearly tall enough, even with high heels on, <laughs> or to drag his body. So, like, that was only when I started wavering a little bit towards the end. And that's interesting because we we actually we had Gino on the podcast several weeks ago, and we kind of talked during that podcast about the difference between this being a who done it versus a how done it. And he said he kind of picked up on that very early in terms of um, not looking for clues as to who the killer was, but really focusing his focusing his efforts on how the murders were committed. I'd love to hear from, from any of you. How quickly did you kind of shift your thinking from trying to figure out who the killer was to really focusing in more on the method that each crime was committed? Like I think, I think it was right away. Oh, all of us at once. Ready, set, yeah. go. go. <laughs> <laughs> I think, like, for me, right away, and I, I think for all of us, because the one of the producers or somebody was like, okay, guys, enough trying to figure out, like, who done it. Try to think of this as a how done it. Because... Like, they don't show this, obviously, but that first riddle, like, this is hilarious, took, I don't know, like, what, an hour and a half? <laughs> hour the first 45. <laughs> an hour 45. So much so that they had to, like, alter it, or I, I don't even remember, but, like, they gave sucked. us two additional clues. And then Giles had two. all so Giles. focused on, like, but they didn't tell us how it worked. You know, basically, what I thought, like, when I found the clue, like, all these streamers would come out and bells and whistles would be like, hey, you won. And it's like, I find it, and, like, everybody's standing around me, and they're like, you're a dummy. You shouldn't have showed anybody. So, I mean, but they didn't tell us, right? We were, I was like, wow, I, I mean, I found this thing. I must get a prize. And no, you don't. You just find the thing. And uh, I think we, we had to learn as we, as, we, as we went along, but we definitely learned immediately that, what can we do today to figure this out so we can be here tomorrow and we'll deal with whoever the killer is much, much later? My pitch to Gino and Ulysses when I was give, pitching them the alliance was from the get-go, it doesn't matter that anybody's the killer because, you know, the killer has no reason to lie to you because it's going to skew the results. And the, you, there's no reason to withhold anything from the killer because at the time, at least, I thought the killer knew everything. So there's no point in lying to the killer. And I actually told them that I hoped that one of them was the killer because it would just be useful to have the killer on your team. Um, yep. And I actually, I was really surprised, this is kind of an aside, but I was really surprised to see that Gino suspected me all along, because <laughs> part of my pitch was the whole thing, I'm like, look, you know I'm not the killer, because the killer wouldn't be the first one to form this alliance and give you this pitch that's like using stuff from outside of the game kind of thing. But that's exactly what the killer would say. <laughs> Maybe. It's the double reverse, right, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, here's a question from Sean uh, that he wants to know. Uh, Team Cam, uh, we, were you intimidated by Melina's outburst during Ronnie's death? Uh, she was totally a different character. Now this is when I felt like, okay, Melina is definitely the killer when we got down to the when we got down to the final four. Uh, Melina, what what came over you? And then I and then I want to know uh, Brian Scally's question of why did Melina acting totally different make you uh, less suspicious of her? So let's start. Let's start with Melina. Oh, she's or is she frozen? Oh. Okay. So, <laughs> well, you know, it was oh, like. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll. No. Right. She's, she's good. She's good. <laughs> Melina, go. Uh oh. I don't know. Oh no, she really went in and out. Oh no, she's back. Oh, there she is. <laughs> am I am I here or am I not? Yeah. Here? Okay. Just I'm like here. in the show. Uh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> no, when you died, when you died, we didn't know it's, it was a big spot. Uh So, M Melina, w when you got to the final four and uh, you, you became a whole different person, how did that happen? Well, I mean, it was three against one, and I just I needed a fight. And honestly, it wasn't you know a complete completely different person. I'm I'm very sweet most of the time. Unless I'm pushed up against the wall. Then I'm not so sweet. And I actually I, I think I chose my fighting words very very well because I didn't come off as a complete psycho. But it was just to that point. It was like, okay, this is it. Like I'm gonna die if I don't do anything. And I will and I will die probably anyway, so I might as well go die fighting and, you know, show America 
the other side of me, the crazy Brazilian side of me. And I don't know, like, and it was, it's also fast. And so when I came downstairs, I had some theories in my head. I had about three theories and I just kind of picked one and went with it and came downstairs and prayed to God that one of them would confirm or deny it one way or the other. And I know Cam and I know if I said something wrong, he would be like, you're wrong. Get out of here or something like you don't know what you're talking about. And when I said what I Which said, what I did. He, his answer, <laughs> your no, your answer to me was when I when I said I don't remember what I said, but you said if you know so much, you know why are you here? And as soon as you said that, I was like, done. Okay, he confirmed it. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know I don't. Um, oh, there goes I don't the finger. There the goes same. the finger. <laughs> oh. oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I actually don't remember it the way that it was edited in the sense that it looks like we're all super nervous as she's reciting all this information. Um, I guess I figured that she had just seen the teacup the same time when I first saw it, which is when we all came out and saw Ronnie by the pool. And I figured she probably had seen at the uh, morgue some ink on his fingers or something, and that's where the information came from. But I don't remember, at least I don't feel like we really confirmed anything. I was just like, well, great, if you have all this information, then you don't really need to waste our time, so skedaddle. Um, but the funny thing is that the girls were about to give her information before she came in and did that. I forget which one of you two it was, but they were saying something like they were feeling <laughs> bad for her and were about to go give her information, and she came and was like super mean. And I'm like, really? You see that? That's what you want to get get information for no reason to, and that's where the oh, did she just become a completely different person? Comic. Came. Lindsay and I were pretty ready to barter, mm -hmm. and to get a little something, something what she saw in the morgue, and then she came in and she she pulled a Lindsay uh -oh! with the two personalities. <laughs> <laughs> so we were like, just kidding. Yeah, um, Ronnie. Now, is it true that you don't read much and you do a lot of note writing? I, d I don't read. It is don't true. Don't lie. I don't read at all. You know, there's plenty of uh, cliff notes and movies out there for me to have to spend time reading. I really don't read, actually. And what possessed you to go write a note to Mr. Giles that day? I don't know. I mean, you know, it uh, it was imminent that the killer that Chris was after me. And uh, I felt that I needed to leave some information behind for somebody to yeah. find. It was so amazing that same that same day that you thought that the killer was working with a trained monkey. You suddenly, <laughs> by that evening, cracked the entire case and were ready to write a note to Giles. I'm that good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, you know, if anybody, if you pause the tape and look at what the note says, it wasn't even like it was going to be a good theory. It was like I know for a fact. The so and so is the killer because I heard so and so tell so and so that they were dishonest. I'm like, that doesn't prove anything. <laughs> was there was that was that fine print in the note that you were reading, Cam? Okay, okay. <laughs> Can we talk about that? Can we please? Oh wow. <laughs> well, I was but I was gonna ask uh, Ronnie if he really enjoys powdered cream in his tea. Uh, more of just a, I'm just milk, but uh, I'll I'll have a powdered cream if there's nothing else around. But uh, she kind of just uh, put it in front of me, and uh, I was thirsty and ready to get blown to smithereens, and I just drank it. Yeah. All right, uh, Cam, tell us about the uh, Giles's employment contract. Okay. First of all, I still <laughs> I swear there was not a magnifying glass. When I did it, there was no magnifying glass there. Oh, check the tape. Check the tape. But, 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 that aside, right? I didn't see that little fine line there. But the rest of the contract is that Giles' responsibilities include setting traps, bringing traps, and disposing of bodies. That's every freaking step of a murder right there. <laughs> and the fact that, the, that his employer says, oh, but don't worry about it, I won't hold you responsible for it at the very end, doesn't make him not the murderer. He's still like a killer for hire. It's just that you know his employer, whoever that is, won't hold him responsible. He's still going to go to prison for that. So I was like... Employer. So what was well, it you know, and then, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I, don't, I never saw it. <laughs> Somebody else Me could answer either. that. 
<laughs> oh, it was an ad- it was it sta- stated in the fine print at the very bottom that it's an addendum to the contract that he is in no way liable and he himself did not perform any of the actual murders. So. Well, she would know. Oh. She wrote it. Yeah, she would know. She wrote it. Um, <laughs> but here's the thing: is that you have to keep in mind also that we when you go to uh, when you get that last one, the instinct one, it says go to meet the killer mm-hmm. to the attic. Um, we. You know, the whole thing with the trap, like, the fact that we left the house and Giles somehow trapped himself and then somehow wiggled out of it, and that we, the last thing we had seen of Giles at the time was that the killer supposedly killed him. So, so like, now all of a sudden he's alive, he's out of the trap. There was a lot of really sketchy things. It wasn't necessarily that I was 100% sure it was Giles was the killer, but it was, like, 51-50, and I figured, I'm going to go with this, and if not, I'll come back, but... Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> uh, all right, Nick Two S wants to know what advice would you guys give to future contestants? All right, so let's say, and uh, and, and people also want to know uh, if the show is going to come back. But let's assume let's assume there is a Who Done It Two uh, next summer. What what sort of advice would you guys give uh, to uh, a future Who Done It player? I think that what we all learned kind of throughout the game, and there was a learning curve, um, is that. Aside from, like, you, not the most obvious solution is the solution, but you really have to take everything with a grain of salt. Like, there was a lot of movie magic, a lot of magic in general involved raising the <laughs> Um But you really, like, once the clues are all laid out for you, it really is, like, a thinking man's game. And that was Chris Abrego's entire vision from the beginning, is he wanted a reality competition for intelligent people for people that could figure out riddles who could put puzzles together and not only that but interact with other people and learn how to gain trust and uh, get coax out information so I think that going into it for another season if you're gonna play the game play the game but know that it, it's meant to be a thoughtful game anybody else have advice for future who done it players yeah. yes Can I- <laughs> go ahead Lindsay go ahead I, yeah, just I. I mean, it definitely. I was impressed by actually the intelligence of most people in the game, um, and I think that if you're not, it, it's a game of strategy and problem solving. If you're not good at it, like, don't even think about trying. Yeah. You know, I would say, uh, don't treat any of the evidence like evidence of a crime. <laughs> I think it's more. Well, no, no, this is the whole thing, like, you, you don't want to overthink it, you don't, uh, they're, they're really more puzzle pieces, and it's like the uh, reverse Occam's razor, the, any, whatever answer, no matter how implausible, that involves all of the puzzle pieces mm-hmm. you have, all the clues you have available, that's the correct answer, even if it seems ridiculous, mm-hmm. if it involves everything that you have, that's the one you gotta go with. Now, have you guys heard anything, do you think that there will be a whodunit too? I have faith that there will be one, but it's we haven't heard anything specific. I haven't, at least. I haven't I, heard anything specific, except I saw a tweet from Anthony Zyker today or yesterday, and it said, like, it was like a second book or something, and it said, read the second book because it has hints on season two. So I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah. well, is there a oh. season two? Because I haven't heard anything. I will say this. Anthony Zyker, leading up to the finale was doing like the trivia contest and stuff and giving away prizes. And somebody out there has already won a trip to the set of season two. So at least for that person's sake, oh there God. better be one. Yeah, right? Oh, <laughs> Was he doing trivia with Gino? <laughs> bar trivia. <laughs> yeah, bar trivia? Um, <laughs> let's see. Um, so uh, uh, Nicole Franklin wants to know, Lindsay, what was it like to have an arrow through your neck? Uh, could you talk us through the mechanics of that of death in particular? Uh, you healed up real well, Lindsay. <laughs> yeah. I have a picture. I have a picture I on got my better. Phone, my bruising the next day. <laughs> that was great. Uh, <laughs> was there supposed to be somebody <laughs> in the suit of armor? Was it a, a trained I, monkey? I think it was a robot. It was robot. Supposed to be a robot. I didn't know that. I yeah, I didn't really know who it was meant to be. But yeah, I guess it was a robot. But it's uh-huh. funny because it, it was so. I mean, they say that these murders weren't meant to be like in line with people's personality or like where they're 
things, but like Dante's Inferno, like Ronnie told us he was a frozen food guy the whole time, then he's all frozen. Um, Ronnie kept joking that if like we just find me dead on the floor and like a joke book on the dresser, like that's all it would take to kill me. <laughs> that was the way I would feel then. Chris, Chris should have done this. Chris should have just left her joke book on the night table and she would have just killed herself. Case closed, no clues. So it was pretty fitting to like shoot me in the neck. Yes, yeah, so you couldn't laugh anymore? Is that why they shot exactly. you? Exactly. That's my theory. Yes. <laughs> oh, no. Chris, how could you do that? You know, it's charming now, but try to deal with it for <laughs> in, in, uh, in a Please. close close proximity to her in a very small room. We, we, we were, oftentimes, we had ear cans on and blindfolds, and it went through the cans. It was the only penetrable noise. While we're here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. At least I wasn't trying to snuggle you. Oh. Yes, you were. Uh -oh. <laughs> Wait, what's this? <laughs> Lindsay <laughs> likes to snuggle, and so about <laughs> like two weeks in, she she divulged her secret of being a a snuggle addict. So um, we would all take turns letting her hug us. And she had the Snuggle Bug Club. Let's not forget that. Well, yes. What's the Snuggle Bug Club? <laughs> oh <laughs> my god. I, did, I was hoping we were not going to go there. What? Oh, that's we it. You killed her. This is that's the it. Of the Snuggle Bug Club. You have officially killed Lindsay. Just watch her die. She's dead. So Lindsay. It's very ironic if Lindsay dies on the game. Stop. Hold on, Rob. She's gone. Oh, she's gone. I'm there she goes. Can she, she can't take it. Oh, like, oh my God, can we send 911? What? Lindsay. <laughs> oh, that explode. All right, when, when do we start the hashtag Snugglebug Club? <laughs> hashtag oh. Snugglebug Club is going uh, to happen. No, we're not going trending. Yeah. Trending. Go on. Snugglebug Club is something that Lindsay and her family enjoy when they get to reunite because they do live far apart from one another. So it's, it's similar to the family bed. They all just hop in a bed together mm -hmm. and... Snuggle and, and tell stories of love. That's a nice. That's nice. <laughs> so the she producers did not you. like want. They did not want us to do that. I remember distinctly. They'd be like, "In six days, you can have Snuggle Bug Club." <laughs> there is no. <laughs> there is no snuggling in Room Manor. Yeah. First, yeah. first rule of Snuggle Bug Club. <laughs> um, all right. This is from uh, Coltrane 1107. Uh, yes, Melina, I do have a crush on you. Am I too young for you? So I, I guess without. <laughs> Well, how how young is too young for you, Melina? <laughs> oh, that's so adorable. <laughs> Considering all my fans are twelve, um, <laughs> they're all too young. Because they were scared yeah, also so the whole I time. <laughs> I get those tweets all the time, like Melina, I have such a crush on you, but am I too young? And they're all like twelve and they're thirteen, and that is just so adorable. And don't anybody say my age, but I am older than I look, so we'll just, uh, yes, you're too young for me. <laughs> uh, for Ethan Hensel wants to know, um, Cam, what did you spend your money on, and did you ever take Ronnie to that baseball game? All right, we'll put you on this. <laughs> yeah. Taking Ronnie to the baseball game yet? Uh, well, for one, I have not received my uh, check yet. I don't think I think they wanted to not give me the money in advance, so people can't look at my spending habits and figure out who won. That might be another um, fine print We have not print issue caught that direction. baseball game yet. We've made... Was that? Fine print issue. Uh, fine yeah. Print. <laughs> print on that baseball contract? Yeah. We, no, we haven't We haven't made it to, to the baseball game yet. We've tried to meet up for, like, drinks and stuff, and I had a work emergency last Thursday when we were planning... that We were, like, an hour away from meeting, and then I had a work emergency. Right. I had to go deal with a... Not a figurative explosion, but something that... Or not a literal explosion, but something that figuratively blew up. Um, and so I had to bail on him. But it's going to happen. Ronnie, are you buying this? <laughs> no. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, it, I, I guess we'll have to let the world... Small game. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we're, we're in close proximity to each other. And, and we have, like, you know, it, it's been a matter of uh, a physical telephone tag that we just miss each other and... and not been able to uh, have uh, lunch or go to this baseball game, but I'm going to hold them 
you know, I didn't stand 60 for nothing, so I'm going to go to this baseball game. All right, uh, Brian Scally wants to know. Wait, 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 hold on. I do want to add one thing. Sorry. <laughs> Just because for the record, uh, we Ron, I did buy Ronnie some shots at uh, <laughs> the uh, premiere party. Him and Ulysses came to my premiere party. I rented out this bar, and I did buy him shots. So, yes. I mean, I think I get partial credit for that. Yes, you do. You do get partial credit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, this is from uh, Brian Scally. He wants to know, uh, why did Chris plan such elaborate murders only to end up with no escape plan and willingly go to jail? Uh, i got to say, Chris... <laughs> This plan for all these murders were so well thought out. It seems like this end game of yours really could have used some tweaking here. No, I just, you know, really like orange. <laughs> it is the new, it's black. The new black I hear. Uh, yeah. It is the new black. <laughs> mm -hmm. Why would why would you just let let uh, Giles arrest you like that? That was the game. I found my greatest adversary. And uh, so now it leaves a nice cliffhanger because nobody actually saw me go to jail. Oh, oh wow. wow. Serial killers always want to get caught is the thing. Yeah. I, need, I needed the glory. Yes. Well, you got it. You found, you found the glory. Um, this is from uh, Paul Jackson who wants to know, Hey, Lindsay, uh, when you were investigating Ronnie's murder, did you purposely not look in the book of toxins since it was sticking out on the shelf? Or did you uh, not see it? Hashtag Lindsay Lab. <laughs> I have a lot to say about. I was so ill these last the last two episodes, and I uh, I had to stay in one spot before I could move on to other parts, and I didn't turn around. But uh, yeah, you can imagine uh, how happy Chris and Cam were to hear that there was a book of to toxins. I think Malisa, Melina actually guessed there was and a book. camera and a camera. Yeah. That was one that I uh, just didn't get over in time to look at. <laughs> well, I, I hope that you have returned to the Snuggle Bug Club and are feeling better. <laughs> That's a yes. That's only Snuggle snuggle withdrawal. <laughs> I was in withdrawal. They helped me out. Um, I guess uh, you know we have so, everybody has so, uh, so many so many questions. I I just love love hearing the behind the scenes uh, stories. Do you guys have any any other uh, ones that were just really funny moments or uh, great times that you had filming the show? You know what? There was one yeah, time you know, that there's... the house. Oh, well, Melina, Melina, and Cam. Yeah. There's. It's the same story. What? Go ahead. No, Is sorry. Is it the same story? Are we telling the same story yeah. about the swimming pool? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So we have this beautiful, huge swimming pool that we have to stare at pretty much all day while we're filming. And then one day, um, I think it was Chris's idea or Cam's, I don't remember, but they're like, you know, let's get in the pool. So, and it was right before, before like bedtime, like curfew. So everybody runs to their room, they change into their little skimpy little bikinis, they run outside and like, one, two, three, I think Chris calls out, and everybody runs, jumps into the pool. I know Cam lost his balls because he was like, it's so freaking cold in here, and Andrew I did it. Balls. Like, I just <laughs> I just stood there on the side. I was like, I'm not getting in. There's no way. And, like, I remember Chris is in there, and she's, like, screaming because it's so freaking cold. And something, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I can say this. Please don't hate me, Chris. But something that a lot of people don't know about sweet little pretty Chris over there is that that mouth, that little mouth on that girl is so foul. So, like, she yeah. was in the She's pool. A killer. And, like, all, seriously, if you had a censoring device, all you would have heard was, like, beep, 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 beep. It was hilarious. But that's the, the only like funny story I have. <laughs> that, that was the same feeling. story you had, Cam? Yeah, yeah, that was the same story. You know, when you had, when you had Gino on, he, you asked him about, um, like, how things were at the house when we weren't filming and he said that it was really tense, and I certainly don't remember it that way. The only, I mean, there was the day that it was tense was when the three of them got the scare cards. Like that ride back to Blue Manor was mega awkward. But I really enjoyed the fact that everybody was really good about clocking out. And once we weren't filming, we were just you know friends, and we hung out. Uh, the, when I, when Ulysses and I were scared, they all got to go to the movies. And I mean, I, I thought it was like we had a lot of cool moments where we were like hanging out and just, you know, being normal human beings for like an hour every now and then. 
Well, it was a uh, a very fun <laughs> show, and uh, you know, we, this was a, a lot of fun to get together with you guys. Any, you guys have any other uh, any other stories or anything you want to tell us before we start to wrap up? All right, I'll take that as a no. <laughs> uh, well, you guys were fantastic. I know the people watching it in the chat room. I'm watching, uh, you know, all these things go by. People uh, really, really appreciated this. Thanks for uh, taking the time to uh, chat with us because it was uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, l let me uh, go down the line and everybody. I, th I do think real quick before you go. Go. Just real quick before you say your goodbye. Like I, I do, I do think that it does need to be noted the fact that you know our ratings throughout the whole, you know, the whole season wasn't the greatest. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't the greatest. But then the finale, like it, our ratings went up, I think, what twenty-seven percent, and it was all because of all of our amazing Twitter followers and our fans. So I think it, I think duly noted. We need to, you know, make sure that they know that we appreciate them so much for making the show happen. Because if it wasn't for them, I don't know. What would have happened? There you go. That's right. An applause. <laughs> Thank let's you. Everybody's so much to the fans. Here, let's go. Let's go down the line. Uh, Chris. Yes. Give us your Twitter. My Twitter at Chris Crot. C R I S C R O T Z. Same, same for Instagram. Okay, and Cam. I am at, at Cam Perez. K A M underscore P E R E Z. And same, same for Instagram. <laughs> Lindsay! Oh, that style's <laughs> impression. Um, I'm at L underscore E underscore Anderson. Ronnie! I'm at, at Ronnie Padron, and also for Instagram, at Ronnie Padron. Kurt! Oh, uh, I am at Kurt Clark, uh, two C's, as, as you know. Yeah, uh, <laughs> just last thing, how did you guys not lose it when Giles was wearing the uh, one piece bathing suit? Oh, he did. <laughs> so, I don't. You don't laugh at that. You you get sad about that. <laughs> that was bad. Did the, now, did you, the producer, you get so sad. <laughs> did the and producer, the straw hat. Did Giles straw. with the with the one piece bathing suit, or did he have that? That was. I think he had that. <laughs> All That's right. He definitely did. I, th I think that w I think that came from Giles's closet. He just <laughs> walks around like that. <laughs> yeah. Sweet little uh. Gildart. And real quick, since we missed it, just a second. Mm -hmm. Mine is at the Molina TV on Twitter. If y'all yeah. want to follow me. Yeah. Uh, that uh, Molina. I'm so. I I apologize. Yeah. God. Yeah, I, you, First you, well, you say I'm a zombie. The whole, then. You the whole <laughs> thing. I forgot you didn't say it at the end. <laughs> I know, I'm kidding. It's all yeah. good. It's all love, baby. <laughs> all right, well, and I'm at Rob Sesternino. Uh, you could subscribe to our YouTube channel with uh, re we're doing reality TV, uh, Google Hangouts, and podcasts all the time at robhasawebsite.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel at robhasawebsite.com slash YouTube. Uh, we'll be back af live after the Big Brother eviction on Thursday. Hope to see you there. Uh, take care, everybody, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Lindsay, one more laugh. Uh, no, I can't do it. <laughs>